Hey guys, it's Eric with the Miller Park Minute, where we're throwing strikes and getting likes, hitting dingers, getting listeners. Back again with another episode. We are talking, oop, we're talking baseball. Oh, 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 hopefully that turned that off. I think I did. I don't know. Yeah, I think we're safe. <laughs> uh, this is your only Brewers Daily Podcast. Uh, it does look like the the Brewers Podcast Network is about to get a little bit bigger. So lockdown looks like it's coming back. But we're still the undisputed, the reigning, only daily podcast comes out every morning, 5.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. So that's us. We're here. You know where we are. We're going to be at opening day. Probably about a 9, 10 o'clock uh, arrival. Uh, we're going to be kind of towards the front in the the disabled parking area. So uh, if you if you do want to stop by and uh, see us, pay a visit, uh, the butcher and I do have plans to be at the opening day. Um, we'll be doing some videos, maybe a live session or two from the event. So feel free to stop by. Uh, in case you didn't already know, we are on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Google, Amazon, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Castbox, you name it, we are there. YouTube, Rumble, press the Rumble button if you're on Rumble. Uh, we are where wherever the the interwebs brings us. So, guys, uh, join in the fun. Join with us. We really enjoy chatting with you. on this podcast we're having fun with it this has been um this has been truly a good time and before i get into today's episode i'm just kind of posting the link in case anybody wants to join live and chat live with me so i'm having a good time and uh, if you want to have a good time and uh, join the live show, um, you are welcome to do so at any point in time. I got behind. I'm posting the stream, the stream yard links, but I am now posting it. I am now being going live and doing it that way. Uh, you can watch us on YouTube, as the t-shirt says. Um, yeah, seven days a week. We're going to recap games we're gonna do lists uh top moments those kind of things uh right now we are in the midst of our recaps so basically what we're doing is we're we're taking the projections got our handy dandy projections right here and we are going to cover different team every day this week uh leading up to opening day i'm probably gonna have to double up let's think here today is we're gonna be the tuesday episode wednesday thursday yes yeah, so we're gonna have to double up these next two episodes so we're gonna be talking more opponents and uh there's a lot of news in in the source today so we're gonna we're gonna break all that out guys there's a lot going on obviously the more the closer we get to spring training the or opening day the more news there is to talk about so that is a great thing. Uh, I am, I am excited. I am beyond ready for the season to start uh, to talk about real baseball and what's really going on. Um, we might talk about today's spring training game a little bit, uh, but there's so much more on the agenda um, with just the moves that were made uh, and everything going on around baseball. So. I think we're going to cover more of that stuff than we are that. And then we're going to break into the Reds, and maybe we'll get some time and we'll get into the Cubs. Uh, it just depends on how long the episode goes tonight. Um, I want to ch to kind of keep these, these episodes together, but I also want to put all the information out. So that's my goal to you guys. My promise to you guys is that I put out good information every day. Um, we've had some fan comments that said we we're doing a great job with that, so we'll continue to do that. 
Uh, Butcher's got a great episode up on the chopping block this week. Uh, we were just chit chatting about it before I came on here to record my episode. So, uh, first and foremost, let's go into the news, let's cover it, and then we'll get into everything else. So, we we have the big announcements to the day. If if you're hearing if you're hearing this tomorrow and you you spent the, the last 24 hours in a cave, you don't know this, but uh, Bryce Turing and Gus Farland are on the roster. They made it. Um, Weimer Freelich are are going to AAA. Um, they posted videos uh, from from both of these, and I thought they were great. I really did. Um, they they did the Yankees kind of did this yesterday, but the Brewers did it as well with Turing. And with Turing, it was great because you know they kind of called him in and said, "Well, we called you up to Council said we called you up to Chicago." Uh, so basically, meaning he's starting against Chicago, or he's he's going to be on the opening day roster, and it was cool. Uh, Gus Farland, similar similar feature. Uh, both players obviously really jacked. It says the Brewers jumped on MLB's hidden camera bandwagon to inform. The pair Turing, club's number five prospect per MLB pipeline, and Varland, the number 27 pro- prospect, that they had made the team. Turing, a former first-round pick, known for his sick defense, will primarily play second base. Varland, the right-hander, rule five draft pick, who won a spot by striking out 17 of his first 35 batters he faced in the cas- 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 Cactus League. <laughs> Will probably begin in the middle relief with a chance to climb the bullpen depth chart. Um, both players have big league bloodlines. Yes, the bloodline. Uh, Turing's father, Brian, was an outfielder for the Mariners in the late 90s, and Varland's younger brother, Louis, made the major league debut for the Twins last year. Uh, so that's huge. I mean, this is like big moments to celebrate. Let's be be glad for these two and uh, really enjoying it. Um, I think we're going to see a couple more major league debuts coming this season. Intent. Um, the guys that got left off, and that's the thing. There's limited spots. The Brewers have to make decisions. Touring's time was here. Touring has been talked about for years, and finally his time called. His number got called, and he he is now on. The opening day roster and great. That's great. Good for him. Um, just awesome stuff. Do you want to play opening day? Absolutely was his response. Same with Varland. They did the same thing to Varland too. Um, cool videos. Just a cool vibe. So, along these lines, obviously, these two making it is big. It's big. We're, we're going to see young talent again, and we haven't had this since the Freddie, Brandon, and Corbin thing. And now, now they're here, and they're arriving. Our cr- club is already getting younger. Um, next big topic, and we're talking about Big Luke Voigt inks a one-year deal. So I personally, I had a lot of fear going into going into this whole thing where he like opted out. And I think that was kind of just like a, a procedural pro- I hate to say that because that's the word they use. Like a a move to make pressure. I think he was making pressure because he wanted a major league contract. And he signed a one-year deal with a club option for 2024. So to me, that's a big deal. That's a big effing deal. Um, I promised I wouldn't swear as much on the pod, so I will do my best to not swear. But after opting out of his minor league contract as a procedural matter and spending a few days 
by the pool following March Madness, engaging opportunities with other teams. Voigt well, signed a major league deal with the Brewers with a club option. Uh, Voigt, who hit 226 with 22 homers last season, had a strong spring at the plate and should see some time at first and DH against lefties. He has a great pedigree. I think he brings a presence to our clubhouse and our lineup that I think will will generate excitement for fans, said Matt Arnold. Uh, needless to say, needless to say, this was a great move. This was well well worth it. Um, kind of made made all the other moves make sense. Keston Hura, on the flip side, was DFA today. Designated for assignment. Doesn't mean he's gone, gone from the organization. That means he is available for anybody to pick up. Um, as he clears waivers and everything like that. If he if he doesn't get picked up, he ends up back in the organization. Uh, it's happened to many players before. It'll happen again. This isn't the first. This isn't the last. Uh, but his his reign as a regular feel a regular player in the Milwaukee organization. Mm, probably at the end. Um, and then they sent down uh, optioned Toro to AAA outfielder Sal Freelick got reassigned to minor league camp as well. So you're gonna see the big boys at big league camp. Um, not gonna see a lot of high impact going on right now at camp. Turing and Varlin made the team. Of course, we already know that. So that's the updates to the roster at this current juncture. A lot of big, big stuff going on, obviously, with this. Uh, we get to see some new guys. Um, and then we're going to move right into this, right following this, because I, I thought this was was a great follow-up. Top 10 rotations in Major League Baseball. This one is an MLB.com article. Um, and, of course, I find it to be fun because who doesn't want to know if we're in the top 10 rotation? Why would it be on the Brewers page if we're not in the top 10 rotation? So we got the Mets with Scherzer, Verlander, Kodai Senga, Carlos Grasco, David Peterson, and Jose Quintana. Number two, the Milwaukee Brewers. Yes. Second best rotation in all of baseball. Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Freddie Peralta, Eric Lauer, Wade Miley, and Adrian Hauser. Topping the rotation list. Just for, for giggles, let's go down the list and just see who else made it. Yeah, let's read about them first. Uh, the roster is going to look a bit different on opening day 2023 than it did last year. But its great strength, Burns and Woodruff atop the rotation, remain intact. Both are under wraps until 2024. The trade rumors will persist if the Brewers get off to a slow start. But the interest only speaks to how terrific these two have been. Woodruff has been an ERA+. plus. Of 139 over the past four seasons. Burns, the 2021 NL Cy Young winner, has a 100, 156 mark over the past three years. The dynamic duo, followed by three arms in Lauer, Peralta, Miley, who all capable of better than average, if not well above outputs, so as long as health permits. Peralta and Miley were both limited by injury last year but each has an ERA plus greater than 130, 30% better than league average over the past two seasons. Uh, number three is the Braves without any doubt. I knew the Braves would be up there. Rangers, of course. Phillies. Yankees, Padres, Astros, Blue Jays. Angels tie with who? Mariners. Good stuff. Good stuff. So we are number two 
I love when we are on the top of any type of ranking. Uh, number 14 in power rank. Love it. Love it. Still in the top half of the league. i uh, talking about where the top prospects will begin the year. Don't care. Do, 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 do. Sorry, waiting. So they're talking about this is another Adam McKelvey. I love I love these these pure optimism in the articles, and that's that's what we need right now. That's that's exactly what is going on in baseball right now. Optimism. We want to get to a point of the happy-go-lucky talks, not the scary talks. We'll talk about plenty of the scary stuff along the way, but right now it's happy-go-lucky. Uh, so the urgency, there's an urgency every year, but it, it's, far, it's fair to say there's a special urgency this year for manager Craig Council and the Brewers. Left out of the postseason last year for the first time since 2017. So... The club has not been there to the dance. Uh, 2018 was our best run. Um, and we've been there every year since 2017. So we're, we're approaching the crossroads as... Uh, see, here we get dark again. Uh, approaching the crossroads with Burns, Woodruff, Adamas, Lauer, Telez. Uh, we already got rid of... Um, Hater, as we all know, what needs to go right. The Brewers, deep in starting pitching, and better lineup than you think. Uh, will Devin Williams continue to thrive now that he's entering his first full season as closer? Can Matt Bush solve the propensity for the long ball? Can Peter Strzelecki and Holby Milner build on last year's breakouts? Will Adrian Hauser thrive when he would have preferred to start? When will Aaron Ashby be back from shoulder, shoulder injury? So those are the questions. Great unknowns. Which version of the LH will you get? Of course. Um, team MVP. Uh, the starting rotation. The Brewers starters finished 12th last year with 3.75 ERA. And 13th with a 12.3 F war. Despite getting a career best 202 innings from Burns who became the first pitcher in franchise history to lead the league in strikeouts. The problem was that he was the only pitcher to make all of his starts, particularly through tough was losing Brandon Woodruff to circulation issues in his fingers. Freddie Peralta to shoulder injury. Both Woodruff and Peralta have been standouts this spring. They're going to the year. They believe with a better rotation depth, and hopefully boost in June so they'll return Ashby's shoulder injury. Team Cy Young will be Burns. Sometimes it's not best to overthink. Uh, bold prediction, Burns will become the Brewers' first two-time Cy Young winner. Is there more motivated player in MLB, the 2021 NL Cy Young winner, and the 2022 NL Strikeout King arrived in camp intent on proving his worth in his ultimate season before free agency. He proved his durability last year by topping 200 dings. When I'm out on the field, I'm going to do what I do. That hasn't changed. Ooh, fire. I love it. I love it. That's good. We want all of these quotes. I want all of the quotes to be fire and steam and lava and magma. I want it all. I want it all to be hot and fiery. That's what I want. All right. Moving along. Moving along. So we're going to go around the league real quick, and then we're going to go into our breakdowns on our breakdown on the Reds. Um, Cubs have inked Horner to an extension, three years, $35 million, basically buying out his time in 
the arbitration world. Uh, White Sox entering 2023 with the redemption in mind. Red Sox, uh, the White Sox were supposed to be really good last year and fizzled really fast. Opening day power rankings. I don't know if this has changed from the one I did the other day. Let's take a look. Astros, nope. Braves, number two, nope. Padres, number three, nope. Didn't change. Dodgers, four. Mets, five. Spend all the money and you're still ranked number five. Yankees, six. Blue Jays, seven. Phillies, eight. Mariners, nine. Ten is the Cardinals. Eleven is the Rays. Guardians, number 12. Uh, 13, the Twins, Brewers, number 14, 15, White Sox, Orioles, number 16, Angels, number 17, Red Sox, 18, 19 is the Rangers, 20 is the Giants, 21 is the D-backs, 22 is the Cubs, uh, 23 is the Marlins, 24 is the Tigers, 25 is the Royals, uh, 26 is the Pirates, 27 is the Reds, 28 is the Rockies, 29 Nationals, and number 30, Mr. Irrelevant, is the A's. So we will update the power rankings as we go along, season to season. Um, lots of rankings, lots of things coming out. Um, we'll talk about them all. Um, six cities set to get City Connect in 2023. Uh, so, in case you're a fan of any other club, um, the A's, the um, Braves ones look fire. If you haven't seen them yet, they look fire. Um, I'd share this on the screen. Let's quick share it just so you see it. Share screen. So, if you can see. The Braves one is really fire. Um, so we got the Braves, the Rangers, Seattle Mariners, uh, Cincinnati Reds, Baltimore Oilers, <laughs> Orioles, and the Pittsburgh Pirates. That um, says Browse. So the uh, there, and obviously the big tie here is they they look like um, the Hank Aaron. Era and it says they're honoring the Hank Aaron era with that. Uh, so let's see here. Oh, okay, Space City. Um, these are the old ones. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. It doesn't allow me to open a new fresh link anyway, so you guys didn't see that. Um, but yeah, New City Connects coming to Major League Baseball. I like it. Glad they're doing it. I like the alternative jerseys. I like the City Connect thing. Um, you've seen it. I wear the Brewers one all the time. Now, let's go back into some more Brewers news because there's a, a bevy of news today. There's so much to talk about. It's not even funny. I haven't even talked about the game that we had. So, here's what's new at American Family Fields. Field. I keep saying fields because of the um, spring training home. It's fields, not field. Um... Four one four concessions menu is new, as we've talked about. I kind of berated that because I know it's just going to be small portions for cheap. Um, it's hot dogs, nachos, cracker jacks, sodas, family sides. So smaller portions for cheap, all for four dollars. They're also bringing back autograph Sundays for kids fourteen and under. This is really irrelevant to you unless you have kids fourteen and under. Um, unless you want to steal someone else's kid and sneak them up there. I did it. It's possible. I was a bad fan back in the day. Um, 
So yeah, this is this is a new one to get people to be able to uh, engage with players. Uh, it's really tough to do though, so keep that in mind. You got to kind of get in line and you got to wait it out. And then the barrel yard should be opening as well for opening day. It doesn't say it here in this article. Uh, they upgraded the lighting. Eight. Uh, we have 784 new speakers installed in the ballpark. Uh, that was part of what they spent their money from the uh, ballpark district for is the new sound system. I thought there was one more thing. Barrel Yard is new, though, too, so. Sunday Fun Day packages are new. That's $59. That includes four tickets, parking pass, all that stuff. Um, not a bad deal. Terrace tickets, of course, you can upgrade them, though. All the... <laughs> <laughs> every news source, every Fox 6, all the Milwaukee news sources have this story, so that's kind of funny. I don't know if that's part of the press kit that they get for the week, but it's kind of funny. And it literally says the same thing in every one of them. And you got your normal off-season off upgrades. They you know, clean it up, slap some paint on it. Five greatest brew sluggers of all time, done by Madison.com. The Wisconsin State Journal did this article. Okay, let's read it. Uh, number five comes in at Gorman Thomas, 1973 to 83, uh, and part of 86. Jeff Jenkins comes in at number four, 1998 to 2007. Prince Fielder, 2005 to 2011. Robin Yount. Who do you think is number one? I know who it is. Number one, Ryan Braun, 2007 to 2020. I goes without saying Ryan Braun was going to top that list. Um, other honorable mentions are Cecil Cooper, Richie Sexton, and Christian Yelich. Christian Yelich's time is not over, so let's let's not throw that throw that one out yet. Um, Minnesota native Gus Farman finds his way onto MLB roster. Didn't know he was from Minnesota. That's cool news. Five things to know about Bryce Turing. Let's read it. Let's read it, guys. Uh, 23-year-old infielder prospect Turing made some surprising good news on Monday. All right. He's consistently got better since he was drafted in 2018. Love to hear that. Uh, his family is crazy athletic. His dad played Major League Baseball, and all of his sisters were athletes. He has a famous brother-in-law. Okay, who's the famous brother-in-law? I'll bite. We talked about his his dad was a mariner, so his mom played softball. Oh, <laughs> his brother-in-law is a punter, uh, Tress Way, punter for the Washington Commanders, who made his second. Pro Bowl in 2022. Hmm. Didn't know that. His family was once on a reality show called Meet Mr. Mom. All right. He can steal bases and can flash leather. He could be the seventh brewer to make Major League debut in opening day, joining two Hall of Famers. Carmen Thomas, Robin Young, Paul Mulder, Joe Kimack, and J.J. Hardy all made opening day debuts. Pedro Garcia as well. All right. We're doing everything opening day. We're trying our best to cover it all. Um, 
Let's go deep. Let's go deep today. Brewers injuries, roster moves. Um, Rick Schlesinger basically is out there saying that um, he wants the the affordability. That's why you're seeing the fifty nine dollar um, for uh, family package for Sundays. The four one four pack. Um, I think they're trying to make Sundays less crowded uh, and crazy, taking away the bobbleheads, that kind of thing. So. Okay, so let's cover the roster real quick. Now that's up to. Okay, so we got William Contreras, we got Victor Caratini, we know that. Roddy Tellez, Luke Voigt, uh, Luis Rios for second base, Willie Adamas. Uh, well, Turing should be in there, though. That's unless they're considering him utility. Uh, third base, Turing. Outfielders, Christian Yells, Garrett Mitchell, and not Weimer. So that's going to be Owen Miller. And then utility, you could say Bryce Turing, Mike Brasso, Jesse Winker at DH, Corbin Burns, Freddie Peralta, Eric Lauer, and Wade Miley, uh, Devin Williams, Matt Bush, Hobie Milner, Peter Strasley, Javi Guerra, Joel Piams. Uh, we'll see about Adrian Hollander's, Hauser because he's still injured. And then Gus Farwood. So there could be like a change or two yet to the roster. Just depending on how it goes. All right, let's talk about the spring start. Just to get this out of the way. Just to get this out of the way. So, we got knocked around. Lauer got knocked around. Uh, final tune-up. Uh, Contreras did have two homers. Um, it was just a, a, a hit-crazy game. Milwaukee had twelve, eight runs on 12 hits. Um Colorado had 12 runs on 18 hits. I mean, it was just a hit parade today. Nobody nobody looked great. Lauer gave up nine hits, five runs. Wilson gave up four hits, four runs. Garrett gave up three, three runs. Claudio then was scoreless. Devin Williams was scoreless. Eager was scoreless. Vera was scoreless as well. Time of game for today's spring training game because this is something we care about. Three hours and 30 minutes. Ooh, it was a long one. Well, yeah. You score 20 runs. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Fact of the matter is. All right. That being said, I think we've covered around the bases today and everything in between. Uh, I'm not going to talk as much on the food. Uh, maybe we'll cover spring training or we'll cover some, some food on Monday. Who knows? I might talk about food and beer on Monday's episode when we're actually at the ballpark, but nature of the beast, right? I guess. Uh, our buddies over at Brewers Fanatics hitting it strong every day. Favorite brewer back, right? They're down to the elite eight. If you want to go vote on that, go vote on that. Uh, there's also an interview with Aiden Maldonado up on the main page done by our guy over there. So check it out. All kinds of highlights. Two days, 14 hours, and eight minutes left, guys. And we're going into our red season preview now, guys. We're going to talk about the Reds. Um, and another bottom dweller. Um team and we're going to battery powers predictions here free joey vado is the first answer <laughs> oh my god that makes me laugh so hard because poor joey vado um so projected lineup jake flick freely uh jonathan india joey vado at the age tyler stevenson at catcher will myers at first base tj friedel at left in left field Spencer Steer at third base, Kevin Newman at shortstop, and Nick Senzel at center field. Uh, bench is going to be Kurt Casale, Luke Maley, former Brewer, uh, Chad Pinder, 
and Stuart Fairchild. Uh, rotation is Hunter Green, Nick Ladulo, Graham Ashcraft, Luke Weaver, uh, Luis Sisa, and your bullpen is going to be Alex Diaz, Lucas Sims, Reaver, San Martin, Buck Farmer, Daniel Norris, Ian Jibolt, uh, Fernando Cruz, and Connor Overton. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when you don't know all the names of the Reds, I just learned them. First time, first time. Uh, so the biggest strength is going to be Hunter Green, uh, who had an intriguing rookie campaign. Um, really solid stuff. He's got a crazy fastball. Um, he's really good. Uh, you got an aging Joey Vano, so that's going to be an interesting factor. Uh, the Reds are not going to be writing writing any uh, wild card stories or anything like that this year, unless something crazy happens. Um, Offseason transactions, they claim J.K. Buff waivers are from the Twins. Later lost him on waivers to the Phillies. Lost pitcher Jake Reed on waivers to the Red Sox. Claim catcher Mark Kozlowski and Aramis Garcia off waivers from the Reds. Oh, no, that's Orioles, sorry. Oh, that was, why is that in the Reds page? Okay, that, that just threw me off. I'm sorry. Uh, reinforcements from the farm. The Reds, Reds placed 13th in Keith Law's recent organizational rankings, getting a nice boost following the summer trades of Castillo and Mele. The clear headliner is Ile De La Cruz, who is the top 10 prospect, number 10. Projected to get 60, 67 to 70 wins this year. And they're projected to finish five, according to my magazine. <laughs> Payroll is 115. Uh, they're ranked number 22 with 115 million. Um, yeah, the. Um, there's not a lot there. It's <laughs> not a lot. Um, Jonathan India was has been around for a while. Uh, some of these names are, are loyal Reds. Um, Edwin Arroyo uh, is a shortstop. He's uh, somebody to look out for. Noville Marte, shortstop third base. He's another one. And there's that De La Cruz that I just mentioned. Those are all their top prospects. I keep the paper so I can read the names. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I don't know these names at all. I The Reds is the worst team for me, so uh, let's just take a look at some of the projecting for the pitching. Uh, Sisa is supposed to get 95 innings. I. It's funny to me with the Pirates and Reds because I'm looking at their, their projected win-losses for these two teams. Um, and their starting pitchers are projected to lose more than they win. Uh, only Nick Lodolo Lodulo is projected to have a winning record of ten and nine uh, with a three eight eight ERA, one point two two ERA um, WHIP, one hundred eighty six strikeouts. Uh, Hunter Green one hundred forty nine eight and nine record, three nine nine one two four one hundred seventy one strikeouts. Uh, Alexi Diaz is 64 innings, 2 and 5 record, 20 saves, 3.52 ERA, uh, 120 whip, 83 strikeouts. Sisa, 95, 2 and 9 record, 417 whip, 133, or 417 ERA, 133 whip, 77 Ks. Uh, Joey Votto, 227 batting average, 6 7. 761 OPS, uh, 53 runs, 20 homers, 61 RBIs, and two stolen bases. Tyler Stevenson, 278, six, 768, 54, 11 homers, 61 RBIs, no stolen bases. Spencer Steer, 229, 
seven twenty two twenty five seven twenty three two. Nick Senzel, 20, 239, 638, 62, 8, 36, and 14. <laughs> uh, really just nothing good to look forward to for them. Bad records. Bad. Uh, I don't know. They're, they're at a spot that's just... Uh, basically, their best bet is Hunter Green, according to everything I'm reading. Value player is Nick Ledulo. Showcase never seeing fastball and curveball combo. Curveball, curveball combos. So, yeah, not a lot to look forward to. Um, I'm going to throw another one in here um, just because I know that I am not doing an episode. So, this would be Tuesdays, that would be Wednesdays, Thursdays. I'm going to throw another one in here. So we're going to do Chicago. We're going to talk Chicago. Um, Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Just my breakdown and what I've got in front of me. So Chicago is kind of destined to be the number three, four spot in the, in the, in the league or in the division. Um, But let's see what, Everybody says with their moves. I, I I like their moves. I thought they'd be closer to a number two behind the Milwaukee Brewers, but everybody's saying it elsewhere. So Chicago. I don't even want that Chicago into my Chicago Cubs. Cubs preview. I don't want to type this into my browser because I don't want Chicago Cubs stuff coming up. Um, so we're going to the Just Baseball. I like what Just Baseball has to say. So 2022 was the first year they entered without their World Series core. You lost Baez. You lost Bryant. You lost Rizzo. I mean, you've lost everybody now. And so now you're kind of fresh building. And they've been in this process of building for years now. Um, it's where you see, like I mentioned in the news before, Nico Horner, uh, getting an extension. They want, they want to keep Nico Horner around. Um, they added Dansby Swanson, who is a big piece. Uh, they're trying out, um, Bellinger to see if they can bring some magic back to Bellinger. There is a lot of pieces with this team. Um, they got Stroman. They still have, um, Suzuki, Saya Suzuki. In the outfield, uh, they added Trey Mancini as well. Um, still have Ian Happ out there. So let's roll down their lineup real quick. Uh, Tucker Barnhart slash Jan Gomes are their, uh, is their catcher position. Uh, Eric Hosmer, first base. Nico Horner, Patrick Wisdom, Dansby Swanson, Ian Happ, Cody Bellinger, Seiya Suzuki, and Trey Mancini as a DH. He could also play first, though. Uh, he was a first baseman at, at one point, too. I think Dansby Dansby was a sneaky good move for them, and I think they got it under under a crazy value because of the value of the shortstops in the market right now. Um, so I think I think that was that was a good good move on their part. Um, I I think their strength lies in adding a guy like Swanson, having Ian Happ still around. If you can get Cody Bellinger to come back, I think uh, that's huge. Your rotation is going to be Marcus Stroman, Jamison Tyone, Drew Smiley, Justin Steele, Hayden Westnicki, Kyle Hendricks. And Kyle Hendricks is like a rock, man. He's always good. Adrian Sampson, that's another one, another name. Bullpen options. You got Boxberger, former brewer. Uh, Michael Fulmer, Julian Merriweather, Keegan Thompson, Albert Azole, Brandon Hughes, Mark Leiter Jr., Roman Wick, Ryan Brook, Michael Rucker, Tyler Dufre, and Jordan Holloway. Prox- prospects who could contribute, you're looking at Brendan Davis, Jordan Wicks, uh, Matt Maravis, Miguel Amaya, 
and Caleb Killian. Says they have a ceiling and the rotation leaves them uninspired about the chances of about winning 80 games. So that's kind of what they're saying about the Cubs winning about 80 games. Um, arrivals, Dansby Swanson, Jimison Tyone, Cody Billinger, Brad Boxberger, Tucker Barnhart, and Anthony Kay off waivers from the Blue Jays. Uh, departures, William Wilson Contreras. I keep saying, see, now I've got to flip the other way. Wilson Contreras. Uh, Jason Hayward, they finally let him go. Uh, Rafael Ortega, Stephen Brault, Andrelton Simmons, Alec Mills, who threw a no-hitter against us. Just pointing that out. Fernando Reyes is gone, too. Um, so, I mean, they made some moves and uh, changed it up. And I think getting rid of uh, Hayward was a big one for him. Uh, so just a kind of high water mark. Nick Madrigal is the high water mark for batting average, 284, um, 682 OPS, 53 runs, one homer, and 31 RBIs. Uh, according to this, Cody Bellinger is going to have a 22 homer a year. Ian Happ, a 22 homer a year. Dansby, 26. Patrick Wisdom at 29. Uh, they they actually have Marcus Stroman and Jamison Tyone holding the most weight, getting the most innings, 156 for Stroman and 158 for Tyrone. Uh, 9-8 record for Stroman, 10-8 for uh, Tyone, 3-6-9 ERA for Stroman, 1-2-4 whip, 129 Ks. Uh, for Tyone, 3-9-9 ERA, 1-2-0 uh, oh whip. 144 Ks. Uh, Kyle Hendricks, 137 innings, 7 and 8 record, uh, 427 ERA, 128 whip, and 104 Ks. So that's the Cubs. I think the Cubs are going to be better than expected. I hate to say this, but I truly do think it. I don't want to think it this week, though, because we're going to beat them. We're going to sweep the Cubs this week. That's going to be our first series victory is a sweep over the Chicago Cubs. I'm not whispering. I'm saying it loud. A sweep over the Chicago Cubs. All right, guys. I have rambled here. Um, a lot of good stuff going on in baseball, and there's just so much to talk about, so much fun. Um, I wanted to see if there was any other news on Hauser yet. So let me check that real quick before I before I finish up today's episode because if you ever want to know my sources, I can give you all of my sources for for all of everything I post today and tomorrow um Tyler O'Neill's gonna open Jackie Bradley Jr. is going to be on the Royals opening day roster. And Matt Duffy as well. Oh, it looks like Rowan Wick just got outrighted. Um, option Christopher Moralia. Jared Walsh and Matt Stassi start this season on the injured list. Trade rumors is the best for injuries. I, I think I just said that, but I don't know. I'm going to repeat myself. I apologize. Tristan McKenzie shut down to uh, right shoulder injury. They say of all these...
Nothing on his injury. Okay, so we'll take that as good news. Good news for the Brew Crew on that one. So, guys, we're going to do this every day this week. Um, we're going to do it in short form. We're going to do it in long form. We're going to do it in podcast. We're going to do it in audio, video. You name it, we're going to do it. So keep track. Keep up with us. The Miller Park Minute is going to continue uh, tomorrow, what being Wednesday. We are going to have the butcher. Uh, he's going to do, do a little different spin. Uh, it's a fun take. Uh, I'll come in with... Uh, I guess we got to finish off with the Cardinals, right? Season predictions. And then I'll kind of do a wrap. So Wednesday to Thursday will be, there'll be quite a few videos and stuff like that being posted on the channel. So stay tuned to the channel, Facebook, Twitter, uh, to kind of see what's coming. There's going to be a lot of opening week stuff, a lot of opening week comp content. And then we're going to do some, some big opening day content coming into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So or I'm sorry, sun, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. There's going to be a lot of Brewers opening day content, so stay tuned for that, guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you for coming in, joining the show, watching with me. Thanks for coming along for the ride. I appreciate you. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment on this video, um, and we'll catch you in the next episode. As always, guys, go Brewers. We are three two days like we're there we're it's time to go let's go let's watch the brewers go brew crew thank you for watching the miller park minute go brewers